Hello and a very, very warm welcome to this Well Balanced Kids yoga video. So today's theme for our class is about um, building up strength. So we're going to be doing some challenging poses today. So we're building up a lot of strength in our body. And the great thing is, is the stronger we feel in our body, it often means that we feel a bit stronger in our mind. Um, so whatever we're doing on our mats, we can start taking off the mat into our everyday life. So if we're starting to feel stronger in our bodies and minds on the mats, overcoming challenges, and that's what we will be able to do in our everyday life as well. So we're also going to be challenging ourselves, and that's really good because that builds up resilience. So if we meet a pose that we find particularly difficult, we can practice and practice, and then we can find that we um, <clears throat> improve and we get better. And again, that's something we can take into our everyday life, that we meet challenges, but that we can overcome challenges. And this word is resilience. And so meeting a challenge and overcoming a challenge means you uh, become resilient. So if you meet difficult challenges in life, it's about bouncing back, being resilient, working out ways to overcome the problem, uh, to keep practicing, to get better. Uh, there's always a way around things and we can become resilient and overcome challenges. So that's why I love yoga so much. Often what we're doing on our mats here, um, we take out into our everyday life. Um, to improve our bodies, our minds, our life basically. Um, so we are doing some really quite strong poses today. So I really recommend that you do um, my warm up video. Um, it's really important to warm up your muscles and your body before doing these challenging poses. So maybe just take the time now to stop this video. If you haven't already done the warm up, go and do the warm up because I don't want you to injure yourself. So it's super important that you do warm up for particularly for this video. Okay, let's get started. So we are gonna start in Downward Facing Dog. It's a really well-known yoga pose. If you did, I hope you've done the yoga warm up now, so you will have done Downward Facing Dog. So to get into Downward Facing Dog, we start on all fours. So we're strong, um, we are stable already. We're just getting ourselves prepared. So what we're gonna do is tuck our toes and then we're going to push into our hands. So we're tucking our toes, pushing into our hands and lifting up our hips, straightening our legs. So the aim here is to have straight legs and heels on the floor, but that's where we're aiming to get. If we're not there yet, that's fine. We can just bend our knees, go up onto our tippy toes as long as we've got a lovely straight back. So from downward facing dog, you're going to choose a leg. I don't mind which one, we're going to do both sides. So choose a leg to kick up. So when you're ready, Kick your leg up, this is kicking horse, so kicking your leg straight and strong behind you. And then we're gonna come forward by bending our leg, moving the weight over our hands, trying to get our knee to our nose, this is bull. Use your breath, and back into kicking horse. One more time, forward into our bull pose, pointing your toe, and back to kicking horse straight leg behind you and then back to our downward facing dog pose taking a few deep breaths here and then we're ready for the other side so kicking up the other leg straight and strong behind you drishti is just down on the floor on the, um, just below your belly button and then coming forward into bull now we're looking between our hands that's our drishti toes pointed pushing yourself back into kicking horse and then one more time forward into bull really nice and strong kicking back to kicking horse and down into downward facing dog taking a few deep breaths and what we're going to do now is bend the knees and come back into a child's pose this is a good resting pose so we've worked the body quite hard let's just have a little rest now just taking some deep breaths. Good. It's important to rest when you're doing challenges, not just to keep pushing, 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 also to rest. Lovely. So that was downward facing dog, kicking horse and bull. So we're now going to do um, warrior, which is a great pose. We're going to do a warrior one and a warrior two. So I'm going to stand up. So you need to stand up for this. Come to the back of your mat. Warrior again is a really well-known pose in yoga. 
So we're going to start off in warrior one. So standing tall at the back, back of your mat. Deep breath in and out. And when you're ready, step forward one of your feet, doesn't matter which one. So your toe is pointing forward. And you're going to go onto the tippy toes of your back foot and bend into the front foot. If you need to make your stance a bit wider, you can. So if you feel like you're too close together, take that a little bit of a step back with the back foot. Then you're going to raise your hands up above you and see if you can lower into that front knee. Strong like a warrior. This is warrior one. Good, now to go into warrior two, you need to put your heel down and twist the back foot. So it's at a bit of an angle. So it goes from being forward on your tippy toes, twist and down. So you're on the heel now. So what you're going to do is your arms come down. I'm sorry, I'm going to have my back to you, but you can see what I'm doing. Arms are open and wide. You're still bending the front leg and you're looking over that hand at the front, along the middle finger, that's your drishti. So we're really strong here, like a warrior. And now watch what we do. As we breathe in, our arms come above our head together. As we breathe out, turn your hands and bend down again into that strong warrior pose. Breathing in, stretching up, front leg is straight, breathing out, bending into that front leg. Good. And we can come out now, so slowly, bit straightening both legs now, arms come down and you can step forward. Good, I'm gonna turn around now and do the other leg. So, other leg goes forward. And we're gonna start off in warrior one as well now. Okay, so remember warrior one, coming up onto the tiptoes of the back leg, back foot, and we bend into the front foot. Get your stance right, so if you're too close, you can take a little bit of a step back with that leg back leg, breathing in, raise your hands up above you into warrior one. Strong, strong like a warrior, arms are straight above your head, taking some nice deep breaths. And now we're going to transition, change to warrior two, so you put that back heel down, slightly turn your toes outwards, arms come down, and you're going to gaze along that middle finger. That's your drishti. So our front leg is really strong. So this is a strong pose here. And we're really strengthening our legs here. Strong like a warrior. Now let's do the breathing with our warrior. So we breathe in, stretch the front leg, arms above our head, turn our palms and breathe out. Sinking a bit lower into that front leg. Breathe in, rise up. Turn your palms, breathe out, bending down. One more time, breathe in. Turn the hands, breathe out. Fantastic. Straightening the legs and you can step to the front of your mat. And just stand here for a moment into Dasana, mountain pose. Just noticing the changes as you're in your body as you're starting to work your body. You may be now noticing you're breathing a bit more heavily. Just taking time to notice this. And also now we're taking time just to settle. <sighs> Settling our breath. Good. So we're coming back down to the mat now. So sitting down onto your mat. And so we've been warriors, we've been a kicking horse, we've been a bull, we've been a dog. So we've uh, been very, done some really powerful poses. We're going to do a boat pose now. So we're moving into being a boat. Um, so there's a different, different ways of doing boat. Okay, so all, all of us are going to start in this position. So we've got our knees bent, back is lovely and straight. We can just hold our knees for a moment. Just maybe even pull your knees a bit to help you sit up straight. Now the first variation, the first way we can do this pose is to take hold of your legs underneath your knees and just tip back a bit, okay? 
So just testing, this is a good balance one as well. So we're testing our balance. So that's the first stage, just tipping back. And you can start tipping back a bit more so that your feet start to come off the floor. Have those pointy toes. That's sitting up nice and straight. I'm looking at you, but your drishti is just above you on the ceiling, not straight up, but just ahead of you, just up on the ceiling. And then let's come down. So we, we do, can do that a couple of times. Tip back, lift those toes, test your balance. So you're tipping right onto the sit, sitting bones. And let's come back one more time, roll back, testing the balance. And then come forward. So that's the first stage. Now if we're feeling really balanced and that felt quite comfortable, next stage is to lean back and remove your hands from your from your legs. And you'll immediately feel it here in your core and your tummy muscles here, really working. That's a great thing. It's really good to work those core muscles. It hurts sometimes, but this is what I'm talking about, resilience. Acknowledging that it's quite a challenge, but using the breath being proud of ourselves that we can do this. Hold on to your knees again, and then come back up. So that's the, the different variations there is one more. So we've tried just testing our balance, taking our feet off, taking our hands away. So the final variation that you can try is tipping back, legs up, arms up, and then you can test straightening your legs, having a nice straight spine, pointy toes, if you start to shake like I am a little bit, it's because it's hard. And then coming out with control and coming forward. We'll try that one more time because it is a challenge. It's good to have a challenge. So rocking back, legs up, hands out, straightening the legs. And coming out. <laughs> and now hug your knees into you. Give yourself a bit of a hug, well done. <laughs> that was really good, it's really hard. Pose, um, testing our balance and our strength. So really, really good. Okay, let's uh, do another a bit of a challenging pose here. We're gonna do a plank. So plank is a bit like we're about to do a press up. So we're straight and strong. So we start off with our hands just slightly forward of our shoulders, not directly underneath, slightly forward. And then we take one leg back. So we've got our tippy toes, one leg is straight. And then we do it with the other one. So we don't want to be high up like this. We don't want to be too low. That's really bad for our backs. So we're straight in a line and strong. Let's just hold it for one, two, three, and then put your knees down. And then you could just push yourself back into a bit of a little child pose. And let's try it again. This time we'll hold it for four. So one leg goes back, the other leg goes back. Let's hold it for one, two, three, four. Well done. Coming out, pushing back. And for the final time, let's give it a go for five seconds. Okay, this is about building up our resilience, knowing it's hard, but uh, challenging ourselves and knowing that we can do it. Okay, so one leg back, other leg back. Let's hold it for one, two, three, four, and five. Knees down, toes down, and push right back into a nice child's pose. <sighs> so taking some deep breaths. And coming forward. So we're going to finish with one last challenging pose here. It's a really, really difficult pose. Again, there's different stages to this pose. So don't feel like you're going to have to do it straight away because I still find this a really challenging pose. But again, if you do this video a few times, you will notice a difference. I promise you, you'll suddenly think, oh, actually, I can do this a bit further this time. Um, I can achieve a bit more. So this is a crow pose. So let's get ourselves up into a bit of a, um, a squat here. Just uh, squatting down and we're on our tiptoes and just testing our balance so you can have your elbows just on your knees for the moment. And then what we're going to do just to begin with is just tip forward like this onto our hands. So hands are out in front of you and then the weight just tips forward. And at this point your knees are 
So we're pushing into your elbows. So you rock back and forward a little bit, coming right up onto our tiptoes and back onto our heels. Right up onto our tiptoes, back onto our heels. Okay, so that's the sort of warming up part of the pose. The big challenge is uh, what we're going to do is try to lift both feet off the floor. So again, I said to you before, I find this a challenging pose, it is, but what we're aiming to do is lean forward and then we're sort of resting onto our elbows with our knees. And then you're trying to push, pull both feet off the floor. So I did it for a few seconds there, but that's a good start. And um, even if you can get one foot off at a time, try that. So leaning forward, trying to get up high, tippy toes. And your drishti is just ahead of you on the mat. So again, use your drishti, use your breath, use your focus and your determination to give it a go. Let's try it one more time. So hands out really spread wide to give you that stability. Elbows into your knees. Tipping forward, feet coming up. Even if you did it for a moment, that's brilliant. So, oh, that was hard work. So let's go into it. Oh, I think we need to deserve a rest. So let's come back into child's pose. Just, this time you can put your hands behind you. So clasp your hands. And then if you feel like it, you can just lift your hands up, extended child pose. You could just push up above you and then hands can come back down. Taking some deep breaths. And rolling up and coming down to a seated position. So well done, we did some really challenging poses there. We were dogs, we did kicking horse, bull, we did a warrior one, a warrior two, we did boat, we did plank and we did a crow. So that is a lot and um, like I said it's really good and, and when you do exercise that gets your heart going it really makes you feel really good. So do uh, try doing this video again, see if you can um, each time maybe push yourself a little bit further um, and yeah challenge yourself. It's good to challenge yourself and like I said if we do that in yoga we're likely to be able to do that when we come off the mats. So I would advise after doing this that you have, um, you know, the final pose, which um, is Shavasana. And I've made a Shavasana video. So that is always the best way to end yoga. So we've done all the hard work and then we get to lie on our mats and do a really deep, lovely relaxation and just let all the hard work go throughout the body and uh, also help to still our mind. So thank you so much for joining me today. Um, I hope you enjoyed it and uh, do look at the other videos, see if there's any you'd, you think you'd like to try. So when we end our yoga class, we put our hands into the prayer position. This is called Anjali Mudra. Take a few deep breaths, stilling the mind. And we say Namaste, which is a way of saying thank you. And I'm thanking you for joining me. You're thanking me for leading you through the yoga. And we're thanking ourselves for doing such good work today. So Namaste. Lovely to have you here and hope to see you again. Bye now.